What does a data-driven user experience provide that a non-data-driven experience cannot? Um, so non-data-driven experience have been around forever, and it uses it relies on information that are very stale, mm -hmm. and at worst maybe just based on some assumptions uh, on what users want. However, like a data-driven approach and the experience actually leverage the data, we remove the guesswork, and then trying to use data to actually learn and know exactly what users want and provide the, the actual true unique experience for each user. So that's something that the non-data-driven approach cannot do. Right, so yes. one is simply about giving people what they might actually be looking for yeah. as opposed to a, a gut instinct kind of one. Exactly, so if you think about traditionally how we develop experience, we probably have focus group, we ask people mm. like what do they want, like do you want a blue button here or a gray button there, and, and however data-driven approaches and um, data-driven based experience actually help you to learn that without actually asking your uh, users, mm -hmm. but actually learn that from their reaction to our website, and then and then base base on those data to to design the experience. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the components of a data-driven application? Is it just uh, front end and back end, or is there another component in there? Yeah, um, very good question. Um, Actually, data-driven approach, if you look at like the big picture, it's very similar to a traditional um, application where you have front-end, back-end, like you said, and mm -hmm. then a runtime data persistence storage unit. And however, but if you really truly want a data-driven um, approach, you, you need to collect the data. So that's something sure. that traditional <laughs> um, um, applications don't have. So um, what I meant by that is like a data pipeline that can collect data um, from your um, from your application in real time and collect other uh, information about this user and store it um, for later use. And after you collect all those data, then you can't just let it sit there and not use it. Then it's not data-driven at all. Right. Then you will need the mechanism to actually learn from this data. And then once you have the learnings, you, again, you can't just make it sit there. You need to be able to use it. So you will have a service platform where it hosts their learning um, online. And then so that when, whenever your application wants to make some decisions based on data, you will, you will be calling that platform to tell you what exactly you should do. So those are the three components I see that are, um, that are in, uh, additional to that extra for the data-driven applications. Do you make a distinction between personalization and data-driven? Um, I do, um, but sometimes people do talk about them as if they are interchangeable. Mm. However, um, so the line is a little blurred uh, sometimes, but however, if you think about it, personalization can just basically means I give you the options that you can choose um, how big the font size is. Right, the yeah, color, you can cut, right, yeah, you can, uh, or you can make a playlist that is personal, sure, that you, sure. you drag songs into it. That's yeah. personalization. And, and then I can also give you an example where it's totally data-driven but not personal, personalized, is that you can, you can collect a large amount of data, learn something, and then build some features that apply to all customers. Mm. For example, there are like dynamic uh, pricing strategies that are based on you know, the demands and supplies um, at that time, and then offer the users a certain price. Um, think of um, some tech, uh, some app that you can get taxi. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. Sure. <laughs> and some, yeah, right, some yeah. random app. That yeah. you yes, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah. and that, those features apply to all customers, not personalized. However, however uh, what I'm trying to say here is even though they, they can be different, but we want to combine them to, mm -hmm. to use, to have both features, um, data driven and personalization, and to, to let the users to have the best experience ever. So, um, in that on on that con in that context, I don't think they are different. Uh, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Mm -hmm. What should organizations consider before adding data driven personalization mm -hmm. to their websites? Yeah. Um, so I would say so nowadays everyone is talking about data driven personalization. I definitely think that is the future because it's so powerful and flexible. It can let you do a lot of things that it couldn't be done before. However, it doesn't all these benefits doesn't come without any costs. Mm. So if you think about it, um, it actually has two kinds of costs: organizational and um, infrastructure. Um, 
like I said, um, when we talk about what um, data-driven application has in, in terms of front end, back end, and the data pipeline, all those infrastructure, you need to put a lot of money to, to build, build that up. And also, um, you also need to think about um, um, all those people that have to build those uh, mm -hmm. complicated, that, that have to understand what a data-driven application looks like, and then, and then build that. For example, the UI is going to be more complicated, mm -hmm. and you need more experienced developer to actually develop that UI. And also, now it's because everything is data-driven, and your testing is going to be more difficult because the UI is not hard-coded anymore. It's all configurable, can be dynamically assembled. And so how you are going to test that mm -hmm. is also you, you need um, people that truly understand the complexity and the, and, and the ro um, design robust testing practices around that kind of data-driven. And also, and finally, you, you need people who can build those models and, and help you to understand the data. Those people cost a lot of money, like data scientists. Sure, yeah. And they usually have advanced degrees, so they cost a lot of penny. But I think the mo those are the infrastructure organizational costs. But I think the most important question that you need to think about before you actually do anything is really truly ask yourself, um, is it because everyone is doing that, I'm doing it? And is it actually, do you actually have a fundamental business uh, use case for it? And also, why, the, where will you use it? Mm -hmm. And is it like part of the, your um, business strategy moving forward? And all those questions need to be thought through before you can, you want to move on because it does cost a lot of money. And I will, um, but, being, all that being said, mm -hmm. um, I think if you can justify the cost, you understand the benefits, and you, then I think that's definitely the way moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then with that, the pl power and the flexibility that data-driven approach can give you would def is definitely uh, something you will want to consider. So it sounds mm -hmm. to me like mm -hmm. this is this should not be in the same domain as oh we just want to redesign. This yeah. is a completely different paradigm. Mm. And yep. it could very well be a paradigm worth engaging in. Yep. Just understand exactly what you're getting into and yep. have some mm -hmm. type of return in mind as you do it. Exactly, exactly. Because it, it does cause a, um, it, it's a, lo a long-term investment, right. I would say. It's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Uh, last question for you. What mm -hmm. people or projects are you following these days? I, I love to check out Kaggle. It's a, it's, a, it's a website that has a lot of data science problems that you can solve because I'm interested in what other people are doing. And then I also like to go to conferences to talk to other data scientists to see um, how, how they practice data science uh, in their companies and what kind of business problems they are solving. After all, we can't just do data science just because we, we want to tie into like the business problems that we are trying to solve. And then we always, uh, I always look for uh, new applications of data science in different uh, business problems. Great. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.